What is going on, Big Blue Nation? Thank you all for checking out the UK Superfan channel. I'm Will Turpin, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at the new basketball roster for the UK men's basketball team. We're going to talk a little bit about each player individually and talk a little bit about my analysis on how I think uh, that these players are going to fit together. I'm going to attempt to make maybe a prediction on the starting lineup and just kind of give you my analysis from really what amounts to about the last three weeks of really trying to get to know this team and uh, studying these players a little bit and uh, starting to get to know their personalities or work ethic. And I'm going to kind of throw all that at you today of kind of what I've found so far. We're only one day away, like I've been talking about all week, one day away now from Big Blue Madness. Uh, it's kind of the beginning of our journey, hopefully towards a ninth national championship in our program's history. I am super excited. I mean, we're getting closer and closer to our first actual time of seeing us play a game, which will be next Wednesday before Thanksgiving. So that's going to be really cool. And then obviously we have another game two days later, the day after Thanksgiving. So it's going to be a whole lot of fun coming up. But uh, today we're going to take a lot of a uh, good long look here at the uh, – at these players and the roster and I'm going to kind of give you an idea of what I think uh, we're looking at and I'm we'll start off up here at the top you can see um, we have a, a seven foot senior Olivier Starr who is a, a transfer from Wake Forest and uh, Olivier is a he's a really dynamic athlete and Really, the thing that sort of stands out to me a lot about him is uh, is just how he's developed over the last three years. Uh, you know, starting out looking at tape on him from uh, his freshman season all the way through last season, and you could just see a constant growth. I mean, we're talking about a kid that, uh, you know, I think he scored like 20 points last year against Duke, uh, against... Uh, Notre Dame, I think he, well, he had several double-doubles. Uh, last season, he uh, averaged 13.7 points and nine rebounds a game. He was uh, runner-up to most improved player in the ACC, so it's not like he came from a weak conference. Uh, and really, I thought he was a uh, an important piece for UK to get. Um to have someone that can kind of be a rim protector. And I'm not saying that he's the shot blocker that Nick Richards was, because I don't think he is. But he does alter a lot of shots. And he, he, he contends after a lot of uh, yeah, shots. He's going he's gonna to be going and looking to alter uh, a lot of uh, shots that are coming on the interior. And really, uh, his teammate, Isaiah Jackson, is probably the best defender in the entire class by several uh, prognosticators I looked at around. Uh, and you put those two guys together, they make a heck of a force down there. Isaiah Jackson, he is 6'10", 206. Like I said, he's a plus defender, a super hard worker. Uh, and I really could see those two guys really commanding a lot of minutes for us and doing a lot of the dirty work around the rim. I mean, Olivier is a, an exceptional offensive rebounder. Actually had double-digit offensive rebounds in a uh, game last season for Wake Forest. So, you know, there's a player that uh, that's continuing to develop, continuing to get better, and in my opinion, will probably be an NBA player. And I think there's three NBA players for sure, three probably first-round draft picks on this team at minimum, and uh, we'll get to the other two here in just a minute. And both those guys, I think, will be lottery picks. So uh, you didn't see uh, uh, you didn't see any uh, Kentucky players get drafted last night in the lottery, but that will definitely change uh, going into next season as we have two of the most dynamic guards in college basketball and probably the, the best backcourt in the nation. And I'll get to that right here in just a minute. But uh, I want to focus a little bit more on uh, – Isaiah Jackson here is a, we're talking about, I mean, just an unbelievable athlete, uh, great wingspan, his big, huge hands. Uh, I mean, this guy is just, uh, you know, he's going to be a beast. He really is. I mean, probably could, 
you know, maybe uh, put on a few more pounds during the season here at UK. He's still a young man. But you see he was ranked 34th in the ESPN Top 100 freshman coming in. Uh, and I, I think he's going to be a player that we're going to fall in love with because of his work ethic. I think he's going to get down and dirty in the post down there. He's going to he's going to go after those tough rebounds, and I don't think this is a kid that you're going to see not hustling uh, 100% of the time he's on the floor. And that that's the kind of player that a lot of our fan base, including myself, we really gravitate towards those players. Uh, you know, I can remember early on in uh, Coach Cal's first year in uh, – the game we played against Louisville, and uh, you probably remember that play where Marcus Cousins went down on the floor, you know, and you know K- the Kentucky program was down, and people were, you know, they, uh, you know, they 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 kind of in- tried to intimidate us. I think a lot of teams did, you know, those last few years with the uh, with the previous regime of coaching, and uh, it was it was unlike anything I'd ever seen at Kentucky, and. We set the tone for something different right away. DeMarcus Cousins went on the floor, made that dive, got that loose ball, and he let it known, let it be known right then that, you know, that this Kentucky team had dogs. And, and that's what we're used to uh, under Calipari. Most teams he has, uh, they do possess one or two of those guys that are just dogs. And Isaiah Jackson, man, he, he's a go-getter. And uh, kind of player that I think, like I said, we'll fall in love with. Uh, the next guy right there in the middle, uh, Devin Askew. Uh, he will share the point guard duties with a, with another gentleman that we'll talk about here in just a few minutes. But um, Askew is a uh, he was sort of the uh, I thought the piece that we needed to get. He I was really concerned whether he was going to uh, commit to UK or not. Uh, really good floor general uh, in the. Uh, Nike League up there, he shot like over 41% on threes, but he's a great passer, has a really good basketball IQ, and, uh, you know, I think he'll spend a lot of time running the point this season. Moving on over, uh, Terrence Clark. Now, this guy right here, I mean, you talk about an athlete. I mean, you, you want to talk about an athlete. 6'7", uh, 194 pounds, uh is there a guard that can keep Terrence Clark out of the lane? I mean, that's what teams are going to have to contend with. How are we going to keep Terrence Clark out of the lane? Because he is sensational at taking the basketball to the rim. And, I mean, I don't know what kind of a finisher he's going to be because, I mean, the tape that we've looked at has obviously been in high school. And I'm really curious to see because if this kid can finish at the rim – and make free throws, uh, he's going to be an insane piece of, of this team that, that could really, really take us uh, where we want to go, which is to a Final Four. Yeah, Terrence is an exceptional athlete. All these guys have an insane wingspan. When I look at these five together, uh, they can cover some ground. I mean, there's no reason why that we shouldn't be one of the best defensive teams. And all the all – media out there that wants to crown Tennessee automatically. And, I, and with with reason, I understand Tennessee's got a really, really good squad. I mean, they got a top five recruiting class, four returning starters, probably two lottery picks themselves. So, but don't crown them just yet because uh, this Kentucky team right here, uh, I expect will come together. We're going to play a really tough schedule coming out of the gate, probably – as tough as anybody in the nation. There probably won't be very many teams that are going to play the schedule that we are before uh, conference starts. So these guys are going to, uh, they're going to have to get their feet wet early. And uh, the next guy is, uh, man, you talk about it. If there was ever, you know, Tyler Hero was a bucket. Man, I mean, Brandon Boston Jr., I mean, my goodness. B.J. Boston is what he goes by on the court. I mean, I don't know what analogies or or adjectives to come up with to describe uh, this kid and his work ethic is off the charts. This kid wants to be great. He wants to be elite, and there's no amount of work that he won't put into it. I mean... Uh, a gym rat, yes. Uh, I mean, he, he's as hard a worker as I have 
uh, uncovered. You know, when I start looking at players that are coming into Kentucky and I start thinking back over the last 10 years, you know, and I've noticed some guys, you know, I remember, uh, you know, uh, hearing reports on MKG, you know, before he come in and just the motor that he had and how he just, uh, you know, went nonstop. And uh, when I look at a guy like Brandon Boston, I mean, it's a guy that never quits moving on offense. Uh, he is so polished to be a freshman. I mean, he can shoot the ball. I mean, you're you're going to see a little bit of it tomorrow night. I mean, when you tune in tomorrow night to uh, watch Big Blue Madness, take a look at uh, at BJ there, man, because he he's going to be uh, really a catalyst for this team all year long. I think he's going to be one of the best freshmen in the country. Uh, he's my prediction for uh, SEC Freshman of the Year. I'll go ahead and just put that out there. And uh, I think that uh, you're going to be really happy with what you see in this kid. And, uh, you know, he's six foot seven. He can get his own shot. Uh, he can make plays. He, he's also very good at putting the ball on the floor, creating a shot for himself, creating a shot for somebody else. Man, he's just a player that I'm excited to get to watch. And you put him with Terrence Clark and uh, Devin Askew, man, that's, that's that's uh you know, those three guys running the floor and, and making plays. I mean, I just almost want to see us just run, 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 you know. I mean, what a, what a team. And then you throw Isaiah Jackson down there. You know, if you want to muck it up and play dirty, you know, Olivier Starr and Isaiah Jackson, man, that, they can muck it up, you know with the best of them, you know, if you, if you want to play a slow down game, I mean, look out because somebody better put a body on both those guys or they will just offensive rebound you to death. As a matter of fact, I think this could be the best offensive rebounding team that Cal has had since he's been here at Kentucky. And I think Jackson and Starr are going to be catalyst for that movement. I really do. And I'm not trying to overhype these guys or, or, you know, get you too excited for the team or whatever. I'm just going and giving you the analysis that I have from what I've seen of these guys. And, you know, I don't know if it's where they're um, sort of in a bubble right now or what, but obviously these these guys, when I uh, started uh, looking at tape from that pro day last week, and it just seems like, you know, for the season not to have even been started yet, and they just seem like there's a good camaraderie there. And already some good chemistry developing, and uh, I think we're going to be hard to handle, you know, uh, as the season moves on. Now, uh, the first guy off the bench is, uh, and I don't have the graphics up here for for all these bench guys that I think are going to be the role players. I apologize for that, but uh, Davion Mintz, he he is a uh, he's a six three point guard that. Uh, Played at Creighton, and uh, last year he battled a lot of injuries and ended up uh, basically redshirting his senior year. But his junior year at Creighton, I mean, he started all uh, the whole season for them and averaged 10 points, three assists, three rebounds. He makes free throws. He's got active hands in the passing lane. I think he had 40 steals that junior year at Creighton. Uh, you know, he makes his free throws. He shot, uh, let's see, uh, he shot real well from from three-point range. And uh, so he's just a guy that can really do it all. And and being a super-plus defender at six foot three two, that's going to give Cal a lot of different options. I mean, obviously, those five that you see on the screen there, they have an insane uh, wingspan, and there's a lot of length there. And uh, and uh, Davion just sort of complements that perfectly. And obviously has experience. He's played on a winning team and uh, at Creighton and and a winning concept, a winning program there has always been instilled in him. So I mean, it's always good to add a winner that's a good player. And uh, that's one thing I've looked at Davion is he just does everything well. You know, so when you get to an end of a game situation, you want a guy that's shot clutch free throws. Um, you know, there's another player that you can stick in the game, you know what I mean, and, and knock down free throws. And I honestly think he'll share a lot of the point guard duties. I, I expect early on in the year to uh, see closer to an even split with uh, Devin Askew and him at the point. Um, 
but I think all four of those guards are going to be heavily used, and I think those are going to be the four guards that you're going to see on the floor the most. Now, from there, it, you know, it's really hard to tell. Obviously, Keon Brooks is going to have a major role on this team, and, you know, he may end up even starting, you know, I don't know what the starting lineup is. None of us do. Uh, that's I don't even think Cal's even determined any of that yet. And early on in the year, it's probably going to be a fluid situation where you see him trying out different, uh, trying out different combinations of players just to kind of get a feel. But the five I have up there on the screen, I think those are during money time. I think that's the five that you're going to have. But you could also see Davion getting mixed in there as well because, like I said, he's he's been there and done that, and he has great experience uh, at handling the point guard role. And like I said, he's just a solid kid that can do it all. You know, and he's a plus defender, which, you know, and, and he's a, an, an above-average free-throw shooter. So all that really gives him a, a good boost. But Keon, you know, it just – He's been injured a little bit. He's had some ankle. Uh, I think. Well, no, it was a maybe it was Achilles. Uh, um, but anyway, you know, he had uh, he had not got to practice uh, at a normal speed. You know, so far the last few weeks as they've kind of gotten started with practice. So, uh, but I fully expect. I mean, Keon was coming in strong. I mean, he helped us in that comeback. It was he and Johnny Jujang last year that really. Uh, led that, that great comeback in the final game, of the, what ended up being the final game of the season down at Florida. I think we were down 18, and and uh, Keon hit a couple of big threes, and Johnny Jujang hit like two or three big threes and and uh, really were catalysts in helping us win that game. So I fully expect Keon to have a good season. Um, and he very easily could start, you know. He very easily could. But uh, he'll have to go earn it. There's no doubt about it because there's a lot of talent. Those five up there on the screen are are uber talented guys. And uh, I'm for sure, I'm pretty for sure that Brandon Boston, Terrence Clark, and Olivier Starr are going to be starting. And would be surprised if, uh, you know, if, if, if either Devin Askew or uh, Davion Mintz didn't start at the point. So that sort of just leaves that... That other position there, I mean, it's just a matter of uh, uh, of, of what Cal wants to do on early on in the year. But obviously, you know, Keon's six seven. Uh, you know, he, he's a great athlete, and he's continuing to develop and getting better. Uh, the next guy is another kid that's got a little bit of experience. He is a, a sophomore. He actually uh, played last season at Rhode Island. Uh, Jacob Toppin, and uh, he's 6'9". He's a forward. He's a super good athlete. I mean, he's got an exceptional vertical. Uh, I don't know how much Jacob will play this year. I mean, he's one of those guys that when he gets an opportunity, he's going to have to go in there and hustle and put great effort out. But he is a great athlete, and he, he's a really developing player. And that's what's so great is, is I mean, not only is he a super good athlete, but he's probably a guy that's going to be around here for the next three years. Uh, like I said, he's already transferred once. He transferred from Rhode Island, comes in here. And uh, I really think that over the next year or so, he has a chance to really develop into a really good asset for us. And, uh, and even this year, he could be an energizer bunny. I mean, when he comes into the game, I mean, he should bring exactly that. I mean, he should, can – he's like I said, he's super athletic. He can go up and get a rebound. Uh uh, you know, at, at six foot nine and can jump through the ceiling. So, I mean, it never hurts to have enough of those kind of guys around. Uh, the next guy is a, a red shirt freshman here, Dante Allen. He's from Falmouth, Kentucky. And, uh, you know, he was on this squad last year and uh, battled injuries. And, uh, and really, we never got to see him. This is a kid, you know, has big old hands and can shoot the rock. And, uh, you know, if he ends up, uh, you know, can – you know, getting his defense where it needs to be. I mean, we're talking about a guy that scored, I don't know how many times. I mean, he was 40-some points every night in high school. I mean, I mean, just an amazing, amazing shooter. And just you talk about just a bucket all around. I mean, this guy right here, I mean, he had some 50-point games his senior year. So the guy knows how to put the ball in the hoop. And I really hope that uh, that Mr. Allen can uh, Dante can get on the floor, and uh, I'm hoping his defense will be good enough to where he can get on the floor. Because I mean, six six guards that can shoot and you know 
and and put the ball in the basket like he can. I mean, that's the kind of player you want on your team. So, you know, Dante, when he gets an opportunity this season, he's going to need to capitalize on it because, like I said, there's so much talent up there. I mean, it's going to be hard to get Boston and, and Clark off the floor. I mean, I mean, I mean, those two guys, I'm just going to tell you, I think both those guys will get drafted in the top six of the draft next year. It wouldn't surprise me at all if they're not, if they don't go one, two. You know, I mean, you know, if we win our ninth national championship, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they don't go one and two. But they, you're going mean, because both those guys are just special guys that don't come along very often. And, and we're not going to get too far into the season until everybody's going to realize just how great they are. But, but you've got to have complimentary pieces. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And I'd love to see Dante Allen get on the floor and uh, show some of that explosiveness that we saw uh, his junior and senior year in high school. Uh, the next guy that I want to talk about here is a 6'6 forward, uh, Cameron Fletcher. He's a little bit of a banger himself. Undersized, uh, I guess, for a banger at 6'6", but... Uh, Man, you talk about a guy that's got some work ethic. I mean, this guy come out of nowhere. I mean, nobody, he was on nobody's really, nobody's radar and just kept getting better and better and better over the last 12 to 15 months. And uh, I think he ended up getting all the way up to like 49th on Rivals, uh, top incoming freshman, and which he wasn't even at the top 100, you know, for, you know, pretty much most of the year before that. And it just... He's going to be a guy that's going to be around here, you know. I mean, this guy is probably going to be around here three years at least, and he's going to win your heart with his work ethic, and you're going to love Cameron Fletcher. I, I can assure you that uh, there's a lot to love about this kid and, and the way he plays basketball, and he is just developing. I mean, if he develops as much over the last 12 months as he has the last 12 months, I mean, we're going to have us a really, really, really good basketball player on our hands. How much will he help this year's team? I don't know. A lot of that's going to depend on. But you get a game where, you know, you was to get some foul trouble. You know, if if uh, Olivier or Isaiah get in a little bit of foul trouble, then, uh, you know, in comes Cameron Fletcher to win your heart, man, because the guy's going to hustle. He's going to go after every loose ball, and that's just his mentality. And uh, I think we're going to like this kid. And uh, the other, uh, the last freshman is uh, Lance Ware. He's a 6'9 forward. Uh he can contribute right away. Uh, I definitely think that he'll be in the mix for playing time. Uh, but again, this is this is another kid that's really still developing, and he took a big swing up, also the last year or so. And and I think he's going to compete for minutes. He's going to compete for minutes. He's just too good of an athlete uh, not to. Uh, we're rounded out with a. Uh, Let's see here. We got Zan Payne, of course, from Lexington. Uh, Kenny Payne's son, six foot four forward. Uh, let's see here. Doo, 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 doo. We also have uh, Kareem Watkins. He's a little five eight guard. Um, now Watkins, he he's a. Uh, Stepdad is Dewan Wagner. Uh, some of y'all may remember Dewan Wagner. He was a uh, he was one of the uh, great players at Memphis under Coach Cal when he was down there. And uh, really, uh, this is just kind of the player that Cal brought in. I really think to just uh, compete hard and practice. Uh, I don't I don't think that we'll see a whole lot of Kareem Watkins early on in the season. Uh, he'll be sort of a you know a guy down there, but he brought him in because he's going to compete hard. Uh, Dewan Wagner was a great player, one of the first one and done players for Cal at at Memphis. I think actually it was his first one and done player. And uh, like I said, uh, he's the stepson uh, of Dewan Wagner, and that's where the connection lays. And uh, you know he's going to be a you know he's going to be a guy that's going to come in. He's only five eight, hundred forty five pounds. Uh, 
But they, you know, they said Eulis couldn't play either. But I mean, I honestly don't think we'll see a whole lot of him. I think he's one of these, one of these guys, like I said, it's brought in to compete hard and practice. Um, and uh, you know, that's kind of what I think. Uh, the other, uh, we got a sophomore uh, returner, Brennan Canada, from Mount Sterling. Here, he's another guy that's uh, uh, doesn't play a lot, but uh, you know, he adds a lot to the team uh, with the way he practices and his work ethic there. And Let's see. We also have uh, Riley Welch. He's our senior, returning senior. Uh, you know, another guy that works his tail off, six foot guard. Uh, you, you see him a lot towards the end of the games. And uh, like I said, another uh, popular guy in the locker room. Uh, works his butt off every day. Uh, uh, great uh, in the locker room, all around guy. And uh, so that's our 15 players right there. And uh, like I said, when we look at. Uh, when we look at these guys, uh, the starting group up here, like I said, the, th the takeaways that I have is I think we're going to be really, really good on defense. I think this group is uh, uh, going to come right out of the gates being, you know, being gangbusters on defense. I think we're going to be a really good rebounding team, and this should be the best offensive rebounding team probably that we've had uh, since – uh, Cal's been here, and so that that's pretty exciting to know that we can change a game. And you know, early on in the season, you know, while you're getting your feet under them, I mean, we we probably won't shoot the ball that well. I mean, it just seems like every year we don't start out shooting the ball, you know, all that well. But but we've not had uh, a more dynamic backcourt in uh, Clark and and uh, BJ. I mean, those guys are really special. Like I said. It, It'll be a handful for other teams to keep Terrence in front of them, and uh, he, he'll he'll create a lot of chaos uh, for uh, for opposing teams. And but we do have some wild cards, like you know Lance Ware. He's a six nine forward, and um, you know Lance is a uh, you know I don't I just you know I'm having a hard time figuring out. He's the one piece that I'm just not a hundred percent sure. Uh, you know, what to expect right out of the gate with him. I mean, a guy with as much athleticism as he has, I mean, he's a big kid, you know, 223 uh, pounds. You know, you know, and he, and, you know, if you look at him, you know, he performed really well uh, in the Peach Jam Finals there. I think he had, like, let's see, 14.4 points, 6.4 rebounds, 2.4 blocks. Uh, you know, he's another, like, he's a four-star prospect, uh, but, uh, you know, he was ranked as high as 36 in the class by rivals. So, I mean, it, it's it's guys like him that are, you, you know, I just have had a hard time getting to peg what's going on. So I'll be trying to keep an eye tomorrow night on, uh, so as we, as we get ready for tomorrow night, Big Blue Madness, uh, uh, Devin Askew, watch the basketball IQ. Isaiah Jackson, just going to be a beast down low. Olivier Starr. He's going to hit the offensive rebounding. Uh, you know, he's going to be an offensive rebounding specialist, in my opinion, and a great rebounder, just a walking double-double. Uh, Terrence Clark is going to get into the lane at will as much as he wants. And uh, Brandon Boston is just going to be a dynamic offensive player and the standout uh, on this roster, in my opinion, and uh, possibly a, a future number one draft pick. So, that's kind of my take. Davion Mintz, he's going to come off the bench. He's going to be probably the first guy off the bench, either him or Devin Askew is. Those are going to be our two-point guards. And uh, I don't know how the minutes will shake out there. I, your guess would be as good as mine because Davion does have the experience of running a program, and he just does everything good. He doesn't have any weaknesses. He'll make his free throws. If you leave him open, he'll hit the three-pointer. He makes all the right passes, doesn't turn the ball over much, and he's a super good defender. So if Devin Askew wants to play minutes, that's what he's up against as far as uh, his competition there in the backcourt. Uh, and like I said, we know what Keon's going to bring to the table. Hopefully he's going to have developed over the summer, and we're going to see a little bit version, maybe hopefully version 2.0 and uh, just continue that steady progress, you know. I really think he could trend up a lot like Nick Richards did. You know, Nick got a little bit better his sophomore year, and then look what he was last year as a junior. 
You know, not only was he a better basketball player, but look at the leadership that Nick Richards brought to the table last year. It was crucial. You know, you know, we didn't get to finish last season, but remember that last season we won the SEC. We won it by three games, and and uh, that was with Auburn having a super good team, and a lot, you know, and LSU. I mean, there was so many good teams in the conference last year, uh, but we won it, and. Uh, you know, in the upcoming days, we're also going to do a Southeastern Conference preview where we're going to break down uh, this entire conference and uh, take a look at it uh, team by team by team. And uh, and I'll kind of give you my forecast on what I think uh, each team's going to look like. So get ready for that video coming up in the future. Guys, I appreciate everybody checking out the UK Superfan channel and the first two videos that we put up. I can't thank y'all enough for the positive feedback. Uh, it's been so awesome the last few days. Uh, go ahead and hit that like button down there. Uh, it helps us with that YouTube algorithm. Uh, the more likes we get on these videos, uh, I'm told that the more people it sends it out to for uh, people to get their eyes on us and uh, see what we're doing over here. And uh, if you uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and uh, it'll keep you up to date on all the latest videos here on the UK Superfan channel. And uh, you know, if you hit that bell notification down there at the end, it'll actually notify you. Uh, it'll no, it'll send a, a notification to your iPhone uh, uh, before we uh, as soon as the, every video is posted, so you'll know exactly when. Uh, when a new video is put up and uh, like I said I want to thank everybody for their support this week it's been a super uh, exciting time for me uh, doing this and I look forward to talking to you guys probably tomorrow night after Big Blue Madness have a great evening thanks again everybody bye bye